So Joy is the new film by uh, David O. Russell starring uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, obviously, they've worked together several times. And I have to say, it is, for my money, one of the strangest mainstream films uh, in a long time. It is inspired, uh, loosely based on the story of Joy Mangano. The story is that uh, Jennifer Lawrence is our central character, living in a domestically dysfunctional circumstance in which her ex-husband is down in the basement. Her father, played by Robert De Niro, has just turned up because the woman that he ran off with has decided that she doesn't want him anymore, so he ends up in the basement. Um, she has all these sort of family problems that she has to deal with. And in the middle of dealing with these family problems, she invents the miracle mop. It is a story about the invention of the miracle mop, the self-ringing mop. And uh, the next thing she knows, her father is involved with a character played by Isabella Rossellini, who, due to a bizarre quirk of fate, has inherited a large amount of money. And though she go so she goes to her father's new girlfriend to ask for investment in the miracle mop. This really is the plot of the film. Here's a clip. You are in a room, and there is a gun on the table. And the only other person in the room is an adversary in commerce. Only one of you can prevail. Yet, you have protected your business and Maurice's money. Do you pick up the gun, Joy? That's a very strange question. There is nothing strange about this question at all. This is money. Do you pick up the gun? I pick up the gun. Good. I'm going to remember that you said that when I speak to my lawyer. Do you get any sense from that clip of just how strange the film is? It's a bit weird. The thing I... The thing I both... I, I like about it, and also I understand why. I mean, the film's done quite done pretty well. At the, what number did we have it in at the in the charts? It's number three. Number three. Um, Presumably on the basis of the cast. Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, yeah, this is a stellar cast. Uh, De Niro. I mean, one of well, let's start in that case with the sporting films. One of the things about De Niro is De Niro is really good in this film in a way in which he's he, he is when he's trying. There was a lot of stuff about. Um, do you remember the walkout from the intern? Do you remember that there was there was an interview that was done with him for the intern in which he said that the the, that the interview the interviewer was had negative connotations, mm. which he was basically asked, "How do you stay awake while making this kind of film?" Which one can see could have you know negative connotations, and he got very cross about it. But there was a general opinion that basically he's you know he's he's freewheeling now. He's not really trying very hard. He's he's kind of you know he's 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 just getting along with it. Actually, the nice thing about Joy is he plays um, Joy's spiky and awkward and difficult father. And he actually looks like he's trying again. He has something of the weird comic timing of uh, Midnight Run. He, he he looks like somebody who's actually, you know, engaging with him. And this, I think, is a lot to do with his relationship with David O. Russell. It does demonstrate that when he cares about a role, he can actually give it some oomph again. Um, and the rest of the cast, really, Bradley Cooper comes on and does that really sort of weird, crazy thing. He's the guy who runs the, the new television shopping channel and he has that vision. He's almost like a sort of, like a preacher or like an evangelist who's discovered that he has this way into people's homes and he's absolutely evangelical about the way in which televised online shopping will work. You know, you'll watch something and it'll bring these products into your home and then you'll ring up and you'll buy these products. I mean, again, which is a very strange thing because it's sort of a story in which the thing that is being aspired to is being on the shopping channel. And then at the heart of it all, holding it all together absolutely brilliantly is Jennifer Lawrence. And I was wondering when I was watching it, if it, if it was anybody other than Jennifer Lawrence, would this narrative hang together in the way it does? Would you would you be as invested in the story? And I think so much of it is down to that. I mean, firstly, she clearly has a, you know a really good relationship with David O. Russell in terms of the, the way in which you know he brings out the very best in her, but also because it's one of those performances which goes through so many different moods and changes and yet all the way through it you completely believe in her you do believe in her as somebody who's uh, struggling to hold her family together you do believe in her as somebody who's having to dig up the floorboards and do the plumbing because they've managed to get a leak in the house again you do believe as her, in her as somebody who whilst mopping is really frustrated by the fact that they cut their hands on a piece of glass but then wonders whether actually there may be a better way of making a mop and then becomes equally evangelical about making a mop Here's an indication of, of how well the film works. I mean, I think tonally it's all over the shop, but that's very much a David O. Russell trope. He does make films in which 
you know, the the bridge between tragedy and comed comedy and between drama and farce is small to non-existent, which I think is also why sometimes people have ended up wondering about which category to put his films in. That all the way through, there was a moment watching the film when I actually became really, really agitated about whether or not somebody on television was going to adequately demonstrate the self-ringing mop. And that, I think, is an indication that the film had really got to me. And I'll put that alongside what I was saying about Hateful Eight and character involvement, which is that for all the things that are great about Hateful Eight, it didn't have that. It didn't have the moment when I really cared whether somebody on television adequately demonstrated the self-ringing mop. And that bizarrely, for me, is the thing that sort of <clears throat> distinguishes those two films. It's the point at which you've, you've invested in the characters. I mean, I know, I understand entirely that you don't have to believe in cinematic characters. I understand there is an entire realm of drama which has nothing to do with character identification. I do understand that. But old-fashioned as I am, I like to root for people. I like to care about. I like to actually, on an emotional level, engage with the characters. And I emotionally engaged with Joy and her self-ringing mop. 